Good afternoon, everybody. Um, you're very welcome here today. Um, I know you're not distracted by Black Friday, so it's great to see you all here. Um, my name is Joyce O'Connor, and I chair the Digital Futures Group. Um, and I'm really pleased to welcome our speaker, Francesca Colombo. And I'll introduce her to you shortly after I just go through a few housekeeping matters. Um, I'm sure I don't have to mention if you can have your phones on silence, please. Um, and those of you on Twitter, our handle is um, uh, at IIEA. Um, our presentation is on the record, but uh, the qu questions and answers Chatham House rules apply. Now, we all know and we hear all the time on the radio, read it in papers, that data is the new gold. And it has the potential to spark a revolution in so many areas, but really healthcare is one of the key areas. And our speaker today, uh, Francesco uh, Colomba, is head of the OECD Health Division, has a background in development studies from LSE and finance and management from the University of Bocconi in um, Milan. She's over 20 years experience of leading international activities on health and health systems. And as head of the OECD Health Division, Francesco has oversight, and I just say this is one of the areas, on um, three main areas in relation to data, comparable data on health systems, application of economic analysis to health policies, and I think critically important, advising policy makers, stakeholders and citizens on how to respond to the demands to improve human-centred healthcare systems. Today, um, Francesco will explore with us the emerging challenges in health, how a digital transformation can help, and although we all know health systems are data rich, they are information poor. And I think really importantly, she's going to discuss the issue of digital transformation and how it relies on policy transformation. Francesco, we look forward to your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here uh, among the, this uh, distinguished uh, audience. Um, my presentation today will talk about data, and uh, if I may say, health is lagging very much behind. It's probably about a decade behind other sectors of the economy in really leveraging data to transform health system for improved uh, consumer surplus, for improved well-being, and uh, for making systems work better. So I will try to address uh, what are some of the challenges of health system, why health is lagging behind, what are the potentials for, for health, and what it would take to move ahead perhaps faster and try to catch up with this uh, 10 years gap and divide. And my main um, message is that it's not going to be an issue of investing in hardware, but it's a, a matter of really having a digital transformation, uh, uh, investing in governance, investing in leadership, that is what really will make the change. So this is, uh, in brief, what I will be uh, talking about, emerging challenges, uh, digital transformation, how it can help, uh, why health systems are data-rich, information poor, and how to move forward. So let me start with health systems and some of the uh, challenges that they have. I will not spend a huge amount of time on that, but you know, we, uh, all of you know uh, health uh, is uh, becoming more and more important for people as uh, societies are uh, aging, as the, the epidemiology of disease is changing with <coughs> chronic conditions, uh, as people um, demand more and better care as their income becomes higher. You know? So it's, we look at some of the projections, and there are some the recent projections that we have made for all the OECD countries, health spending is projected to go up, and that's total health spending. So we have Ireland is a little bit, so it's close to Portugal and Israel. It's a beyond, it's a, a be less than the OECD uh, average, but the increase in health spending between now uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, a few decades, 2030, is going to be quite significant. It's going to be for more than 1% of GDP. And so even if there's been a, a slowdown in health spending in a number of countries uh, du uh, during the crisis, soon after uh, it has uh, started to resume growth at higher rate of growth than uh, uh, GDP. So, it's, so that is something that makes health system a little bit worried. How do we 
pay for uh, the needs for the future. But uh, we also know that health systems actually do have a lot of things which are not delivering anything good. Um, and it's a, <laughs> it's a little bit of a sad news, but we have uh, estimated that about 20%, 20 per, 20%, so one in, uh, um, in five uh, euros uh, is uh, ineffective at best or could be even uh, harmful. So we, defined, we call this a sort of waste in health system. It's both clinical waste, uh, you know, medical errors or adverse events that could be prevented, like one in 10 hospitalization on average across city countries. Unwarranted and un unexplained variations uh, in the way medical practices is done, from the way knee replacements and cardiac procedures, inappropriate uh, <coughs> prescription of pharmaceuticals, uh, particularly, un uh, you know, look at antibiotics, for example, emergency, visit to emergency departments, which could have been avoided and so forth. So there is an ample, ample, ample evidence of things in which we could be doing better, and arguably, obviously, with some better use of digital, we could address some of those ways, and I will uh, uh, mention a few things uh, moving forward. Um, oh, what happened? Yes, there you go, wrong bottle. And, but the other fundamental things which is uh, happening is that the expectations uh, of uh, societies and, uh, and patients and citizens more broadly is changed. I mean, the model of care that we have at the moment, moment is uh, something like this one. You know, the patient comes, sits down, the doctor examines the patients, and at some point the patient is trying to say, you know, let me know if you want to know <laughs> why I am here. And it's uh, this uh, model of uh, healthcare that has been predominant in the past in which the no doctor knows best, and the doctor, in a way, plug that knowledge onto the patients is really uh, called into questions right now. Uh, individuals do want to have a voice. Uh, they want, want to have choice of health services. They want to be part of the co-production of health as well. Uh, they want to you know, have a conversations uh, with, with the doctors and be able to co-create the, the, the health uh, that they need and, and, and the future. And so there is a really a striking uh, um, you know, difference between uh, how we have built the health systems of the past and what is the expectations of uh, uh, citizens for not even just the future, it's really for, for right now. So in all of that, actually digital can come with some help, but it can make also some of those pressures a little bit more evident and more urgent. So how can intelligent use of data and technology help to address some of these challenges uh, uh, which I just described? What are really the benefits of uh, uh, digital? Now, in other sectors of the economy, it's quite dramatic how digital has transformed everything. Um, if we look at uh, the aviation industry, uh, they, uh, the use of digital and of data in particular has, uh, you know, come in a way to transform completely, not just the experience that an individual have. You buy your own ticket right now online. You go and very quickly go through the uh, security systems. Um, while you are flying, uh, a lot of data are being collected by, by the plane. These data are then transmitted, centralized, uh, to analyze uh, all the processes to prevent future issues and to ensure that there are no accidents or things like that. I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's quite well known. Um, this is obviously not happening in, in health, um, even if uh, health is inherently a risky business uh, in a way. But also like any other way, you know, the way individuals can get their own services uh, at, you know, very easily um, buying them uh, online, uh, e uh, educations and so forth. So better products, better services, much more efficient and higher consumer surplus. There, these opportunities uh, apply to health do exist. And the one way to categorize what could be those opportunities is, uh, is shown in this uh, graph. So there are opportunities for having much better clinical care. So really trying having uh, much faster use of the crit clinical information, which is critical information to reduce medical errors and having uh, a more uh, effective uh, and efficient also care. Uh, clinical optimizations. Uh, there are some wonderful examples in some uh, OECD countries. If you take, for example, in uh, um, Israel, which is uh, which has a system based on, a, on a, a series of competing health insurance and club leads, which is one of the biggest insurer, and really invested in pulling together all the data 
and trying to uh, develop some algorithms for uh, trying to prevent when people will be at risk of hospitalizations, particularly elderly people, and really reduce the readmission <coughs> to hospitals. It's really uh, an example of clinical optimizations, which is quite, uh, quite striking. Or uh, if you look at uh, uh, Finland, it's got something called uh, in, uh, in Ulu, uh, which is one of the city. Uh, they, have a, they have an online platform where they plug all the different data that individuals uh, have. Um, they can also interact with those data, add in any information and clinical observations that they have. Uh, they can uh, connect through telemedicines also to uh, their doctor in a way that allows them to not go and need the doctor, uh, to go and see the doctor unless it's really needed. The doctor can focus much more on critical uh, cases. And this has been used also as a way to um, uh, reduce uh, the cost for the health system. So there are some really wonderful examples. That's one first uh, big area. The second one is the system management and really managing the performance at the system level. And I must say that probably that's where not much is, uh, is happening at all. So how do we monitor performance better? How do we reallocate resources better? Understanding where the research needs uh, are the planning of, uh, of services, that's uh, again in another important area where, where there is very, very little which is uh, happening. Surveillance is a third important uh, area. It has to do, for example, with surveillance of uh, products like pharmaceutical products or medical devices, uh, real life surveillance uh, of uh, the performance of those products, but also population health. Think about the uh, occurrence uh, of uh, um, an epidemic uh, or, or so forth, the ability to predict when those epidemics might happen and emergencies. Um, and, so, and then there is the issue of uh, using that for research and innovation, so, so leveraging really the statistical power, getting uh, varied data sets all brought together to really understand uh, what new treatments uh, are, are needed. I mentioned the issues of people-centered health care. I think it's quite fundamental. If we look at the data, and Ireland is uh, un unfortunately a little bit on the right uh, side, um, in terms of the percentage of adults who, adults who uh, sought the health information online, uh, and how it has over the years really escalated. So it goes back to the issues of uh, individuals want to be empowered, want to know uh, their data, in many cases demand even the ownership of the data, although I have, uh, uh, you know, I'm a bit uh, skeptical about, um, about the individual own uh, their own data. They're public, uh, um, they're used for, for public reasons and they should be made more available to, to everybody's uh, use. But uh, there are definitely opportunities that exist for much more personalized uh, um, uh, services and people-centered services by leveraged data that uh, individuals themselves do want and demand. And the last example is the use of, uh, uh, of uh, data and, and big data to uh, you know, having sure that we have a more predictive public health model. So the ability really of uh, pulling together data that could be also genetic data, um, like Estonia has done, that puts together data from uh, uh, GPs uh, together with genetic data to identify individuals who are at risk of cardiovascular disease um, and also breast cancer. That's really something which allows a predictive uh, type of model in, uh, in public health. Or even there are some pockets, and there are pockets, they're not system-wide examples, but in the United States, trying to use not just health data, but also broader data about populations, which could be also social data or uh, you know, other data sets um, to identify households that can have children ex at risk, for example, in this case, of lead poisoning, or even to understand which uh, food establishment might be at risk, a risk of safety violation. So the idea really of bringing not just the health data together, but health plus social policy data, plus all sorts of other data. Uh, or again, the issues of uh, trying to understand uh, uh, safety aspects of medicines, like in Australia, that is really bringing together all different data sets to do so. Now, so those are pockets of uh, good examples, and there are, there are many of those in many different OECD countries, we find that. However, my main uh, argument is that uh, health systems, they are incredibly data rich, but they're quite information poor. Uh, and they're also like not using uh, uh, data really to, to, to transform the health system for, for, for the better. And so let me have some reflections about some of these issues. One good thing that is happening is that uh, the health system is rapidly digitalizing. I mean, it's, this is a snapshot of all the uh, countries and it shows the percentage of primary care physicians and acute 
care hospitals which are using electronic medical records. I mean, I must say that Arnold is a little bit again on the, <laughs> on the right side. Uh, and uh, it's, it's particularly in terms of the hospital uh, data. But most of the countries are actually moved towards the, in a way, if you want, one of the first steps. Let's, uh, uh, you know, digitalize the system. Let's have electronic medical records. This is happening. But even for the countries that have all of that 100%, there is a huge but that we'll uh, focus uh, on. Uh, digitalizing, uh, you know, the services by having electronic medical records in itself is not what really makes the magic trick and achieve all of the benefits which I talked uh, at the beginning. And so let me elaborate a little bit on that, on some of the things which are not necessarily happen and which are fundamental to happen. The first issue has to do with exploiting the data. And by exploiting the data, when we speak in, uh, in health, is really the ability to take all the different data sets, I'll explain this, it's a little bit difficult to read, so I need to, uh, to explain mm -hmm. to you. But what essentially it, it is, is taking all different data sets that might exist in the hospital sector, in primary care, in biobanks, in, uh, um, in, the, in the safety of um, uh, medicines and medical devices, all these different data sets, very often I just individually uh, <coughs> left. They're not brought together, they're not linked at the individual level for different reasons. So what this graph shows is that it, it looks at all the different countries. Uh, the blue line looks at the availability of national data sets at two different points. One point was in 2013 and then recently in 2019. It's based on a survey that we have done with all the countries. And um, what it shows is that for the majority of countries in between those two years, there has been an increase in the availability of the data. So there are more national data sets which are uh, available in all countries. Now, when we look at the other issues, which is are those data sets regularly linked, um, we see a much uh, worse picture. We see that uh, there is less regular linkages. We also see that over time, it has actually slightly gone down. Um, which uh, essentially, if you look at Ireland, which is the second from, uh, from the right, uh, we see that in terms of uh, uh, availability, there has been tremendous uh, in increase in improvements in terms of regular linkage of these data sets. This is not happening. And uh, unless those linkages are, are occurring, some of the benefits which I spoke about at the beginning are very, very, very difficult to realize. Uh, another issue has to do with the use of electronic medical records. So not just you have the electronic medical records, but then you use them for what is called the secondary purposes. Secondary purposes include surveillance of disease or also research. And we have searched and looked at uh, countries, with, uh, served countries, in terms of their readiness to use the data contained in electronic medical records for those secondary purposes along those two lines. Um, one, the axis on the X is the technical readiness, and I'll explain to you, and the Y axis is the uh, governance readiness. So the technical readiness has to do with things like, are the data in the electronic medical records of a good quality? Are they com complete? Are they accurate? Um, is there uh, interoperability standards so that you can bring those data together? So that's the technical aspect. The data governance aspects has to do more with the legal framework for safe use of the data. And it has to do with things like the possibility to create new even data sets for research purposes, or even the existing of uh, <coughs> national um, govern governance and planning for those data. So that's the governance aspects. And we see that it's only a, a, a pocket of countries, like about 10 countries, and it's the usual suspects, the Nordic countries and uh, New Zealand. Uh, you have Singapore, which is a known OECD country, who are really have those readiness in place. And Ireland is unfortunately, again, a little bit on the, on the lower side. Another issue which is fundamental uh, and a possible application is the use of data, and particularly routine health data, so data which are collected in routine encounter of the health system. Uh, for managing uh, medical technologies, and we have done a service of countries to what extent those routine data are used for a number of things. And we see that in uh, most of the cases, they are used for monitoring trends in medicine use and also for uh, monitoring spending. 
but the very, very advantage of evaluating the cost effectiveness and the, uh, the effectiveness, the comparative effectiveness of medicines, or even uh, uh, to monitor patient's adherence uh, to those treatments is done much, much, much less. So the data, in a way, do exist, but we don't make use of them. We don't link them. We don't prepare them in a way which can realize all the uh, you know, important advantages which are talked about. Um, talking about uh, self-empowerment of, uh, of uh, individuals themselves, obviously uh, people want to have access to their own data much, much more, and 17 OECD countries either have already or are planning to allow people to have access to their own medical records. Um, however, only less than half of those countries allow uh, individuals and patients to interact with the, re the record, so to add perhaps their own observations, uh, monitor some of their vitals and include them into the, the system. So it's, uh, it's uh, you know, not getting there in a way, and we know that people want, you know, they have an applique to monitor themselves, but why don't we allow that to happen through the electronic medical records um, systems, which, which is where most of the health data are contained. And last thing is the health workforce is not ready for digital. So we have done a survey of uh, all the uh, professions and looked at the skills uh, of all the professionals, including, including the health sector. And what we found that depending on the country, depending on the sector, between 30 and 70% of health professionals report that they have critical uh, shortages related to digital tools and data analytics. So in a way, the, you know, the workforce in a sector which is very much uh, and fundamentally uh, labor intense is not ready for, uh, for digital. Uh, there are also updated uh, uh, work processes and um, a lack uh, in general in involvement as well. Most of the professional think that um, you know, digital tools are, are a black box or data are, are, are really a black box uh, for them. So my argument is that what we need for the future is not just spending more. There is probably a little bit of spending more that is needed. I'll show some, some slides. But that it, fundamentally, we need a complete transformation, a digital transformation. So it's not just digitalization, but thinking about the processes, thinking about the uh, governance, thinking about the structure, which is really what is needed. Now, a few words about investments. It is true that health is lagging behind, again, other sectors. These are graphs uh, pulling um, you know, across different data sets at OECD, but it looks at the ICT expertise and how it is in short supply compared to other sectors. So these are specialists as a percentage of total, I, ICT um, specialists as a percentage of total employment, and we see the health is very much towards the right. Uh, pharmaceutical is a little bit more on the, on, on the left, but in, in terms of the health systems, very few people with um, ICT expertise. Or even when we look more generally at investments uh, in, uh, uh, in information uh, management, so the investments in software, uh, for example, as a percentage of gross fixed uh, capital formation on the left, um, we see health again, which is the red one, being among the lower investors, and the same in terms of purchase of ICT services uh, as a percentage of output. So definitely there is an issue of investment. The health is somehow investing less than in other uh, sectors. Uh, but as I said, it's uh, the issues of digital transformations is much more than just investing in the hardware. It has to do really with critically changing the strategy, the governance, um, and the capacity, including on the health workforce. So it's the digital transformation, if we think, is not just digitalizing processes, really, really quite, quite something which is quite complex. Um, it really something which is really system-wide and require really uh, a sustainment, sustainable investment in, uh, in uh, things which are way beyond the, the hardware. Uh, so you really need to think about the... Um, how to change the processes, how to change the workflows into the health system, how to modernize policy, how to get the data governance rights, uh, which are fundamental to, uh, to achieve that uh, transformation. So it's really an institutional um, and policy change overall which is needed. Now we have made some heroic, I would say, efforts <laughs> at calculating what would be the return on investment for that. And based on our calculation for the OECD countries as a whole, 
for each dollar or euro which is invested in digital transformation intended in this way, not just in terms of hardware investment, but more broadly in changing the, uh, the processes and the governance, uh, you could uh, count on a, uh, on a return of uh, around three uh, euros. So it's a uh, return investment on, on one to three. And those uh, uh, returns are in terms both in terms of efficiency dividends, so that waste that I talked about at the beginning that could be uh, reduced, at least part of it, but also in terms of the health dividends, so, you know, uh, better therapies or previously unmet needs which become uh, addressed. So it's a, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity for the health system. It's obviously not an easy one to get to. So in conclusion, um, there is a digital transformation that, you know, it's out there in a way that technologies is there that can produce that. Uh, health is lagging very much behind, about 10 years uh, behind uh, other sectors of the economy. And, uh, but to address that, it really requires a fundamental policy uh, uh, change. And so what I think is uh, really critical uh, to do that uh, is uh, not just digitalizing the system that you have right now. If you just digitalize what you have right now, you might not have that critical transformation, but rather changing the strategy, the governance, and the capacity overall. So in terms of our calculation, we see that this more smart way of investing will lead actually to a quite healthy economic return. And with that... I'll finish uh, with this just quote, you know, the key barriers to building a 21st century healthcare systems uh, are not technological. They are in the institutions, the processes and workforce that were forged before the digital era. That's the, just the cover title of a um, publication that we just released on, on the topic. And with that, I'll uh, thank you very much. Thank you.